now move to our next keynote speaker, Thomas Sauer from um, Carriot. For those of you tuning in on YouTube, this is the second CME symposium. CME, of course, stands for Software Engineering Automotive and Mobility Ecosystems, developing a curriculum for the next generation software engineers here at 42 in Wolfsburg, soon in 42 Berlin. And uh, Thomas comes to us from the um, enormous venture. It's not a startup, but it's certainly a venture inside the Volkswagen Group. Uh, they have pulled together experts from all over the uh, Volkswagen universe to develop the Volkswagen OS and the whole digital ecosystem that revolves around it. And Thomas is uh, one of the team leads uh, taking care of uh, the uh, dimension that he's going to share in the next 20 minutes. So, Thomas, now it's time for you to take over the screen. Um, the floor is yours. Okay, um, Mark, thank you for, for introducing me. And uh, yes, it's exactly what you said. Uh, so, um, hi, I'm Thomas. Uh, I'm from Carriot, and uh, we're the new kids on the block when it comes to the Volkswagen Group. And uh, being a new a business. Um, I guess it's always a good uh, way of introducing ourselves by uh, telling you what we're actually doing. So I'm speaking to you uh, from a, let's call it a division uh, called Digital Business and Mobility Services. And what it is all about, well, uh, Max already outlined it. Um, so I hope this is now working. Um, we are part of this huge endeavor that the Volkswagen Group is um, is uh, is now uh, taking a stance at um, we try uh, to um, provide an automotive platform uh, including uh, the Volkswagen um, OS uh, that will uh, run uh, inside of the vehicle but also the parts uh, we are doing together with Microsoft um, when it comes to the automotive cloud but someone needs to pick up this and uh, uh, land it towards the uh, uh, consumer and this is us. This is digital business and mobility services that tries to make sense out of all of this and uh, provide good customer service. So when you look at Carriot, um, so we are uh, doing essentially uh, five distinct um, uh, features, five distinct um, functionality blocks. Uh, first of all, of course, is the automotive platform itself uh, just outlined. And then there is uh, top sitting parts uh, running uh, within your car. We call it intelligent cockpit and body. Um, then we have, uh, of course, autonomous driving, which is also a huge part of the uh, 42 mission. Then we have vehicle motion and energy, which is uh, becoming, of course, um, more and more important when you look at uh, battery electric vehicles. And then it's us, digital business and mobility services. And I'll dig a bit deeper what we are doing in uh, just a minute. But uh, having said that, um, yeah, um, Max uh, said it in the introduction, we are, of course, uh, looking um, at um, an endeavor uh, that uh, was um, bringing together uh, talent from uh, the Volkswagen world. So it's uh, Volkswagen passenger cars, Audi, Porsche, uh, other entities in the group. So um, it, it is a startup, more or less, when you, when you look at the organization, um, but uh, it's already a huge one. Um, I guess we now crossed the mark of uh, 4,500 employees. Okay, um, so um, looking at this, so um, what is it now that we are doing? Uh, we as software developers at Digital Business and Mobility Services. In short, um, yeah, we develop software that connects our customers. Um, we are producing the software you can actually use as a consumer. Um, so uh, think of uh, mobile apps, um, allowing you to control uh, certain car features. Um, and looking at the organizational aspect, um, we do exactly what we just heard about this uh, inner source um, uh, idea. Uh, we act as more or less the home of software developers who then go into the various teams and simply do that, develop software. We are working fully integrated uh, within uh, product teams, so there is uh, no um, separate business unit, there is no silo. Um, uh, where uh, people need to cross organizational boundaries, but we really work fully integrated on uh, these exact uh, pieces of software. Our strategic target, you can uh, look this up in various newspaper articles, um, of course, is uh, we want to do 60% internal software development, um, but uh, that also means 
hey, um, still 40% of uh, the software needs to come from elsewhere. And uh, uh, we'll see this in a couple of minutes. Of course, we all, uh, we of course uh, rely on open source. We of course rely on uh, expert knowledge uh, from uh, outside of the company. And we'll of course still continue to use that. So um, speaking of the organization, um, it, uh, it's still a journey. Um, so right now, um, when you look at uh, my own team, um, we started with a single developer back in uh, April uh, last year when we started. And uh, over the course of the year, we pulled together talent from across the group. We hired from day one. Uh, we did a lot of recruiting events. Um, we, still, um, we still do that. And if, uh, over the course of a year, we've grown to 40-ish uh, people. Um, we're, as with 42, we are also an international thing. Um, we have now uh, close to um, 12 uh, nationalities uh, working uh, together. Um, we um, are working in Wolfsburg and Berlin um, as of the speaking, and um, we're living of the DevOps mindset. Um, we, of course, uh, want to um, uh, want to uh, share knowledge, not only within Carriot, but we also want to uh, bring in uh, knowledge and expertise from the outside world as well. And to, in order to do that, we founded uh, something we call Software Development Guild um, that uh, pulls together uh, then ideas about uh, quality standards, best practices, uh, patterns, whatever it is, uh, uh, to the actual development team. And uh, for exper experimentation, we also started something called Learning Innovation Day. Um, and uh, this is also a, still a growing thing. OK, um, that's the organizational part. So, But uh, what are we now doing? Um, in essence, we are creating an ecosystem. Uh, just for uh, illustration, um, you can think about, uh, of course, uh, the car running in the field um, in case of the Volkswagen Group. Well, we, um, we are looking at uh, 10 million cars sold each year globally. Uh, that's really a huge number. And uh, when you look at the cars of already floating around um, in Germany alone, uh, it's a huge fleet. Um, you can talk to and you should talk to it because uh, it's ubiquitous that we have all sorts of problems when it comes to the transportation sector. So uh, connecting all these cars is a good idea um, to actually make good use of uh, this uh, fleet and to, to, to learn something about the habits uh, of those using these cars. Um, in order to, um, to offer uh, something to our consumers, um, the two examples here, uh, we have uh, a, a website called My Volkswagen, for instance, for the Volkswagen brand or uh, the uh, WeConnect app, where we can control certain features. Um, but it's not done exclusively for one brand, but it, we at Carriot want to uh, offer these services to all brands uh, working together in the side of the Volkswagen Group um, to um, uh, provide a good uh, functionality um, across uh, all the uh, all the brands across uh, all the uh, car car lines available. And of course, you guys can imagine uh, we have a plethora of uh, additional systems involved. It's not only a website and, a, and an app uh, that need to talk together, but uh, think of hundreds of uh, backend systems, uh, dozens of uh, front ends, um, not only for the consumer, but also for the B2B domain, for rental agencies, uh, for um, all sorts of uh, users sitting at their desks uh, at uh, retail, uh, retail ships, things like that. So it's really a huge ecosystem and we are part of it. And as Carriot, we are the premier provider of this ecosystem to the brands. So um, practically speaking, what can you expect? You can expect exactly things like this. Uh, so uh, expect an app, our developers, and I'm more than happy uh, that uh, two of, uh, of uh, our team are all also participating in this very uh, Zoom call. Um, they are actually uh, creating um, this uh, this app. That's the user experience. Then uh, you can see, and uh, this is uh, one of the uh, premier touch points uh, to this uh, aforementioned ecosystem. And in order to, of course, uh, to uh, to do that, you need uh, all sorts of interconnectivity. You need all sorts of interfaces um, uh, that uh, features like uh, turn turn on um, uh, AC or um, start uh, auxiliary heating or open door that this is actually working. And it's becoming more and more important. 
Uh, so uh, think of uh, of car sharing, things like that. Um, so um, in in the future, it will be more ubiquitous that you uh, no longer need a physical key or something uh, to to access um, a, a, um, a vehicle. And yeah, um, this makes it, of course, very interesting for a car make. So um, now, um, when it comes to producing software and uh, um, I'm more than happy to be uh, here today talking to software professionals. Well, um, it's, it's no surprise that uh, we definitely need to go a quality first approach. This is really something uh, we want to build inside the genes of Carriot because we are a traditional car maker now turning towards a mobility service provider. Why it might be forgiving for a startup, for someone who still needs to prove that uh, uh, they can sell a product in volume, we are an established car maker. Uh, and uh, so um, when something goes wrong, um, it's um, negative press all across the place. And especially if you are um, the Volkswagen Group, uh, which uh, had its, uh, its share of negative press in the past. So um, we want to uh, go um, quite um, uh, regularly uh, regard, regard when it comes to uh, quality. Um, but of course, uh, we want to do this uh, in a modern way. So uh, it's not uh, the thinking that we write uh, longish specification documents and uh, then hope that someone reads it. No, we are going uh, the path of test driven development, of continuous integration, continuous deployment. Um, we are um, heavily investing in DevOps and uh, surrounding this via agile methods. So once again, practical example, what does this mean? If you are part of our team, you would use, uh, you would use um, uh, uh, tools like test flight to provide nightlies or, and uh, to um, provide release candidates um, and uh, provide this uh, to a huge number of, uh, of test users um, to provide this um, on the mobile devices um, of um, typically um, relatively large uh, product teams. Um, and um, uh, of course, there are a lot of organizational hurdles. Um, of course, uh, you need to uh, make sure that this thing is running on a larger scale. Um, typically, our applications are, um, are delivered in um, many international markets um, at the same time. But uh, tools like this uh, enable us to do things um, in a highly automated way. To sum things up uh, on this end, yes, testing and automation is it that keeps us running. Without that, we would, uh, we would not be able uh, to produce um, the, the software and the quality we need. Um, and of course, um, we rely on expertise coming in from the outside. While we are writing our own code when it comes to um, talking to, to the car, because we see this as a core competency of a car maker, we rely on the expertise, on the tools available in the market, like test flight, but also on best practices learned elsewhere. Uh, for instance, um, uh, looking into uh, things like GitHub, uh, GitHub Actions, um, that um, uh, allows us to automate uh, huge uh, portions of our uh, activities. Um, and uh, as you all know, it would be really, really tedious if you would have uh, to, to do things manually, like uh, having to think about that you need uh, to, um, to start some, some uh, integration uh, test cases or something. So um, we try to automate whatever is possible. So just said, a typical example is GitHub Actions. Um, and um, it, but that's uh, not all. Um, of course, um, when you when you uh, do a, a pull request these days, uh, typically you uh, start to to run a plethora of processes in the back, and you need to maintain this. This is part of the code base. This is part of the com overall complexity of writing software these days. But without it, um, we cannot live up to our uh, quality first principle, and uh, we are more than happy to invest in this. And it would be great if um, over time uh, we would uh, also use um, a, um, a format like uh, or, or, or a program like uh, 42 is, is offering uh, to um, bring in fresh talent, uh, sharing the same uh, quality first thinking, helping us uh, to improve over and over again, and perhaps in the future even contribute uh, to these open source projects to or collaborate with other companies uh, investing in in these areas. 
it's only an example and uh, it's uh, we we, uh, we know that uh, looking at quality is only a, a, a tiny fragment of uh, creating software but it's really important because we are we are new to the digital business but we are not so much new when it comes to to the car business and uh, we need to bring these together and uh, our typically our customers um, have a a robust feeling about what they can expect when shelling out uh, tens of thousands of euros for a product. Okay, um, I already touched this, um, and um, I am. Uh, this is what uh, our organization is uh, look uh, is looking at. We want to um, foster information exchange over a software development guild, uh, touching all the areas I just mentioned. Um, somebody asked uh, in the introductory round um, that uh, he or she uh, didn't know what software development two means. Well, um, at Garrett, we are growing so fast and that we now introduced a, a competence center approach. And uh, in order to overcome the silos uh, we just heard in the first keynote. So we have started with the, a, a branch called software development. Then uh, we simply added a second one. And now we are looking into creating a third one. And uh, this is all um, a part of a larger development cluster um, where we enable our developers to shift between uh, projects uh, back and forth. Um, but uh, the information exchange, uh, the processes, the principles, quality standards, talking to third party services, um, having uh, new ideas about uh, identity and access management because OAuth 2 is not everything. Um, all this is happening in the software development guild and if some of you participating uh, today are interested in perhaps uh, joining us for um, uh, some information round um, or a short presentation. Just uh, give us uh, some uh, a hint, and uh, we do we take care of of the rest. Oh, that was now a rush through. Uh, what are we doing? It's still a lot of work to do. So I conclude uh, my presentation with, uh, of course, the most obvious: we are hiring. So if you know someone who, who wants to join uh, this uh, new thinking in, in the automotive industry, um, please drop us a line. And yeah, that's it. So uh, now, Max, I guess then it's once again Q&A. Well, first of all, it's a big thank you and a round of applause. Um, uh, this is a great insight, and uh, I, I believe the, the video might actually uh, get some traction because a lot of people are curious what's going on at Carriot, and, uh, and it's good to get these individual peaks. We can also share uh, another presentation by uh, one of our Carriot fellows, Nadi Kahle, who nicely introduces the five pillars of uh, the <coughs> Carriot business approach or the way that you are organized. I'll um, move back to um, get you on the video and uh, I want to open the floor if um, so, uh, someone from the audience has a question um, and we can engage in some conversation. Thomas, thank you so much, by the way, for sticking to the time. I think um, we are able to move into lunch mode. Um, with the um, uh, announced 10 minutes delay. And Mario, you raise your hand. Please come in with the, the question. Hi, it thanks a lot for the presentation. I found it super interesting. I really like the DevOps approach that you're using for digital services. I think it gives a lot of agility. My question is the following. Um, I understand that the development of the software inside of the vehicle is still very much bound to a more waterfall type of model, for example, using automotive spice and functional safety, etc. So how do you see these different two approaches and are you thinking of a way to bring them together? Uh, absolutely. Um, so you're right. So when you when you look at um, what's happening in the embedded software development space uh, here at Carriot, of course, we need to always distinguish between aspects like security and safety. When it comes to safety, you um, you are um, bound to a lot of regulation. The automotive industry is one of the most um, regulated industries in the world, so you have to be very careful because in the end, you need to have a product that you can sell. 
So um, uh, certain uh, assertions um, that are right now done, uh, let's say on a manual basis um, are more and more automated as well here. So we see uh, a lot of um, ideas coming in from the digital business space uh, into the traditional um, uh, engineering space. Uh, it's still a way to go, um, but we are trying to shift um, the portion of work that's done in, let's say, our domain um, and uh, reduce the amount that needs to be done in the traditional space. So um, put more things on the cloud, so uh, as, a, as a bold statement, and do less uh, within the car, um, because the less software you have uh, uh, riding around uh, a town, uh, the less uh, you need to take care of uh, when in case uh, there is an accident. And there are uh, a lot of services we see now in the market um, bring these things uh, nicely together. Uh, think about a very unpleasant thing like a car accident. Um, when you have something, uh, cars of um, uh, the, the latest uh, model years have a feature with them called roadside assist. Uh, you can you have a small portion running of software running in the car, detecting that there was an accident and then calling up uh, services in the cloud uh, where you can uh, be provided um, additional services. I'm not talking about the kind of crashes uh, that are life-threatening. I'm talking about uh, the bump uh, someone uh, does um, uh, in, in the parking lot or so, uh, where um, the, the additional service offered is, hey, do you want to have a, um, an appointment in, in a workshop nearby, something like that. But you can do that. And in the old world, you would have had a, a, a full run uh, um, through ASPICE processes uh, for the entire uh, flow, but that's then the sex appeal of having an ecosystem like this. And all the major car makers are going in this, that direction, but um, uh, since we are much in the volume uh, market, we of course need to uh, always make sure that it makes sense in such uh, volume situations. So long, long answer for a short question, but uh, I hope this puts thing into perspective. It, it's about the substance, yeah. about the length. Um, so, <laughs> um, glad, glad you are saying that. <laughs> one of the nice things, if I may point that out, um, is again, you know, we are amongst engineers talking real stuff. This is no public relations press stuff. We really want the, the, the truth and nothing but the truth, right? No, no need to uh, pretend. In, in fact, the more open we are about the challenges we have, the better we can solve them together. I think that's a, a general notion. There is a couple of uh, questions in the chat and Alex Pretschner from the TU Munich uh, has, I think, an interesting observation. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. He observes that um, German OEMs differentiate with a lot of variety in uh, and configurability in their models, while Tesla, for example, doesn't, right? They give you one car. Uh, do you see um, this distinction uh, with the high configurability uh, continue into um, the, the future What at your work at, at Carrier? Well, that's um, something very specific to the markets. Um, Tesla is coming from the US and traditionally US is a stock market um, where you can go to the dealership, uh, buy a car right away. In order to do that, in order to be able to do that, you can only have a limited offering. So um, you can, um, in, in, for, for most manufacturers uh, over there, only offer um, two or three car lines. We see this trend uh, coming to Europe uh, more and more um, when uh, uh, the switch is done to battery electric vehicles, because uh, in these kind of vehicles, um, you typically have infrastructure to do um, customization in a different way. You see that you can uh, do uh, your, your customization um, on a software basis as well um, by features like um, a function on demand. Um, Tesla also pioneered here. Um, you can uh, there's a feature where you can buy uh, more range, for instance, which is uh, really a function on demand uh, put, um, stretched to the extreme. But um, uh, we'll see uh, less um, variety uh, when it comes to the hardware, but more variety when it comes to the software. And this, of course, is then carry its business, providing the infrastructure, providing uh, the the actual services. Uh, to uh, come to this uh, new, uh, new thinking. Um, because um, uh, we also see the trend that uh, consumers these days when buying a car and huge organizations buying many cars, 
that uh, the trend is that they do not no longer um, find um, it attractive uh, to select uh, uh, between uh, 20 or so uh, different uh, different uh, um, colors of um, uh, certain materials, but they find it more attractive uh, to um, uh, to see uh, services that connect to their infrastructure. Consumers like to uh, connect to perhaps uh, services offered by Google or someone else, and uh, organizations like to connect to their own IT. Um, so, uh, and this is becoming more and more important when you look at battery electric vehicles because the most basic service is find out how uh, find out about the range um, is still available when entering the car. And um, yes, um, by uh, offering um, customization options uh, here, you get uh, a better uh, advantage in the market. Uh, but on the hardware side, we see a clear trend to reduce complexity um, because uh, complexity in hardware always means a high production cost. Very true. And um, as we can tell that there, um, you're knowledgeable and opinionated about these uh, topics, um, I do think that it's worth um, organizing another career knowledge sharing uh, sometime in the, the close future where we can then really uh, spend more time also in the um, conversation. I see um, Alexandra asking about security. I see Mark asking about integration um, of existing um, uh, apps and landscape, yeah. right? This is certainly also interesting for all the third parties that are contributing. Yeah, absolutely. The, uh, run. Um, I, I would um, suggest that um, we um, uh, take a break now and uh, I hope you, that you can be around also later on and that we can continue the conversation. Sure. Certainly uh, the contacts of all fellows are available on our Notion page and um, uh, that way you know the, the idea to, to mingle and exchange and build trust and relationships across organizations is uh, part of the design and purpose here.